do not invest in this launch pad. It is a scam. You will not get your money back. It's a rug pool. That's the bear sentiment we've been seeing on CoinMarketCap. But I am here to tell you that in every story, there's another side. Let's look at the Polygen launch pad. Let's look without thinking about all of these oh, nasty nerds in their attics talking talking trash about this project. Let's just forget that for a second. Let's just go in with an open mind and see if we can make profits with Polygen. Is this a launch bet going to be able to generate profits for us or is it indeed a scam and should we stay away from it? You guys, I'm very excited to look into this project. So if you are too, make sure to stay tuned. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to get into Polygen. I'm super excited and I think you guys might be as well. But there's so much we have to get into. We're going to get started right away without wasting your time. Before we do, give me 10 seconds. Please move over to the subscribe button and click those notifications on. I really appreciate that. While you're at it, destroy the like button. It's free. And uh, I'm also not a financial advisor. So make sure to do your own due diligence and never ever just trust my word. I'm very I'm a very reliable person, but just check it out for yourself as well. It's not financial advice. All right, you guys, let's get started. The Polygen Launchpad is built on the Polygon blockchain. It is made for Polygon projects, so you can be early and invest in these projects. Now, the Polygon blockchain has been going crazy. Matic as we know it. It is at nearly 90 cents and it has been getting a huge amount of media attention. Of course, the first pushes were in 2021, but its latest push happened in late 2022, a while ago. It was a combination between, well, it being an amazing blockchain and of course their media attention with their new partnership with Disney. It has caused the projects on the Polygon chain and the Polygon launch pads to perform exceptionally well. Polygen has the potential to join them on this beautiful adventure of growth. But are they going to? Well, we're going to look at that in a little bit. So this is their homepage. We're going to move over and look at everything here in a little bit. They talk about why they're special, why they're different. Of course, main uh, USB here is that they are a community launch bet with a lot of uh, voting rights, etc. But we are not going to move into that as of right now. First, we're going to look at the tier system. Yes, that's right, you guys. That's what we're going to start off with today. How to participate into the tiers and what to do, what to pay and what you will get for it in return. So uh, it's a bit of a difficult path to navigate there. Here you see launched app. Um, make sure if you click on fixed price, you will go here to the uh, projects from here you can click on tier I already have it open somewhere there we go uh, you will come to this page you'll have to actually scroll down a bit and I recommend you guys to just bear with me okay I I'm not being a, a, <laughs> a little pussy here but minimize the screen a little bit it's difficult to read this is the original um, it, it's nearly impossible to read so make it a bit smaller here we can see that we have mega gen giga gen and Terragen. So we're going to dive straight into the tiers, of course. We see here Megagen, it is costing you 20,000 PGen, immediately telling me that the launchpad token is very cheap because this is a ridiculously low price. There's no way that this is a very expensive token. So we're opening the coin market cap and we see here the Polygen price. As you can see, it is barely any value whatsoever as it nearly immediately tumbled after its TGE in late 2021. So the price is, well, much less than one cent. Grab over a trusty calculator. That means that 20,000, which is, let me calculate for a second, this is 2,000, this is 20,000, okay, times zero point, it's a lot of zeros. I can never do this out of my own head. Uh, three, and then uh, there's a three eight, okay? So the total price comes down to 7.6 US dollars for the first tier. Oh man, that is no money at all. So it's super, super cheap. So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I mean, depending of course on your GDP, right? Relatively speaking, it is a, a cheap tier, but for you, it may be, might be expensive. We don't know. Um, but anyways, 20,000 PGEN, that is how much it costs. Uh, you will get a 50 days perk activation period. So it will take 50 days for your perk to be activated, I assume. Then here we have a 1.2 multiplier for individual max purchase amount for fixed price range. 
Uh, okay, so a 1.2 multiplier. Now I assume again that all of these perks are going to be active after 50 days. I'm not sure uh, if I read that correctly. Please inform me if I am wrong on that. And then here we have a 5% price discount for FLO race and an emission token DAO governance. This one is coming soon. Um, very interesting to see that they say it's a community driven launchpad, but the DAO token for the governance isn't there yet. It's incoming soon. Um, it's given to all three of the tiers, not just the Mega Gen. And here we see medium chance to get access to exclusive offers and to surprise airdrops. Okay, so I have a problem with this, you guys. I have to be honest with you. So, yeah, I, I, I don't like to trash it right off the bat, but first and foremost, medium chance. What does that mean? Right, let's think about that for a second. What, is it, what does it really mean? What is medium? Uh, is that a 10% chance? Is that a 50% chance? I mean, medium uh, might be half or just 30%. We don't know. So what are my chances of getting exclusive offers and surprise airdrops? Uh, that is quite a big thing. I mean, if I'm putting my money in, I want to know, you know, just be honest with me. Am I getting a 10% chance? It's fine. I just need to know it's the cheapest tier. It's like, but they don't say a low chance. They say medium chance. chance. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, same here, a good chance. What is a good chance? Define good, right? Uh, it's different for everyone. I mean, for me, uh, a good night of rest is very good. But for you guys, uh, that's probably just uh, average, right? <laughs> here we see high chance to get assets. What is high chance? Okay, I I'm going to stop, but you, you know what I mean. So if, uh, let's see, if this was 20,000 for the first tier, 20,000 was uh, seven and a half dollar, then we already know that GigaChan is around 14 bucks. And TerraGen is then around 28 bucks as US dollars for you. So these tiers are incredibly cheap. They're no money at all. Again, relatively speaking. Now we are in a bear market. So it makes sense. All of the launchpad tokens are cheaper, but this is in particular very cheap. So that is what we are going to have to pay in order to get the uh, tier. Now, before we look at the token and all of the other information that you have to know, if you want to invest, uh, we're first going to uh, do something else. That's right, you guys. We're gonna we're gonna do something else. Man, this is so laggy, by the way. We're gonna look at the tier page and see what they are saying and if there's any information here. After that, we are going to set up our MetaMask with Polygon real quick. If you're not interested in either of these things, use the timestamps below to see the white paper, the token, my price prediction, and much more. You don't want to miss out on any of that. So let's see what else we have on this page. We see the features, which is price discount on races, higher individual max purchase amount, and exclusive priority access to selected feature races. Okay. And here we see um, hold more PGen, gain more rewards. It pays to hold a big surprise token and NFT airdrops, access to exclusive offers and rewards, emission token coming soon, and the DAO governance token coming soon as well. All right, so those are the extra, uh, extra um, utility that they give to stakers. And here you can also become a member. And ah, oh, that is just in the tiers. Okay, that's how they, uh, all right. So, and here are the steps to join. I'm going to get into that now, how to actually, uh, you know, set up your MetaMask with Polygon and get started with this tiers. Again, if you're not interested, skip forward on the timestamps. You don't want to miss out on the white paper, the team and the token and my price prediction. All right. So the very first step that we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to move over to this article. It says everything very, very basic. You just have to download MetaMask. If you've already done it, basically just open it. Uh, you do that over here. Uh, let me actually grab this. Uh, no, that's not a very good way here. I have already connected my wallet. So somehow I can't uh, check it anymore. Wait, uh, let's see, there we go. So click here and then click on add network. Um, you're, you're not gonna be able to see it actually. Oh, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> just open your MetaMask and, and click on the Polygon mainnet or ad network if you don't have it yet. Then type in all of the information you see over here. Um, first the network name, then the RPC, chain ID, currency, at explorer, etc. Once you filled everything out, you should now have your Polygon chain on your wallet. Scratch real quick, damn, the, the Poland here is crazy. And then once you have it connected, you can now um, buy yourself the tokens that you want and click over here on the tiers 
to participate. As you can see, we have insufficient balance, but after you have done your purchase, you should be able to have enough money and participate. Okay, enough for my tutorial face. Clearly, I'm not that good at it. <laughs> so uh, right now we're going to move over. We're going to scooch over to the next part. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's right. So the next part of this video, we are going to be looking at the projects. Now, you might be wondering, why are we moving over to the projects already, right? Is there not other things we have to do first? No, of course not, crazy person. We first have to look at the projects. It's the most important thing, right? What is the utility to the token, right? What makes uh, the Launchpad token the Launchpad token? Why would you buy it? What is the main utility? Well, obviously, it is to being able to participate in projects. So we need to know what kind of projects do they launch and are the projects giving any good returns? Currently, I have very, very bad news for you all. If we go to see all and click on ongoing, we can see that there are no projects currently going on. Go to upcoming, we can see that there are no current upcoming projects. This is bad, right? If we move over to the token, we can see that there is a downward trend. People are not, uh, the, the price is dropping, right? People are selling their tokens. Why is that? Well, it's because, you know, there's no utility to the token. If you don't have projects, then you have no need for staking or buying this token. I mean, the token is only decreasing in price, right? It's a bear market that is going to decrease in price. So if you hold it, you lose money. So you need good, clear utility to the token in order for, uh, for you to want to hold it. People are not holding it because there's not enough utility. So the price is dropping. Now this can all be solved by launching new projects, but as of right now, they aren't currently doing that. Well, it might change in the future. For now, we can look at the old projects that they've already done. We're seeing Diablo, Build Tilibrot, uh, pff, no, no idea how to pronounce that, honestly. Uh, we have Elf Matrix and Elf Protocol. We have a bunch more over here, Galaxy Arena, Krikalao, uh, Panther Quand, and Rune Nation, and that is it. So that's only nine projects that have been launched. Six of them have been, sorry, five of them, four of them, sorry, I'm being stupid. No, all of them, my God, I'm so stupid. All of them are private. Uh, except for uh, CrickDAO, that one was a public. Um, that one was a public round, and then we have Alpha Protocol also being a public round. Okay, fair enough. So let's click on well, basically either of them. Uh, let's look at Diablo first. So this is one of their completed projects. Uh, the launch date was at the fourth uh, of May, I believe that is the fifth month, and that was at 2022. They raised what is this 10k. Uh, that is 100%, so it's fully raised. And the end date, uh, oh, it's already ended, okay. Uh, the individual max purchase amount was 6,200, no, 62,500 RD cash. And then the price per raise token was USDC 16 cents and total available raise tokens was, uh, again, the same amount there. So uh, let's see if we have the, there we go. This is the current token. Uh, it is worth, two cents. So that is not too bad, actually. Uh, it's not going down too much. We can see over here, though, and that is problematic. We can see that the TGE was not very much a success. Um, moving over, let's uh, zoom in. Now, again, before you think, okay, this is not important, this is important because the past is the best indication we have of the future. How did the projects perform? What returns did former investors have? If they're very bad, then, well, you might want to consider that your returns might not be very well either. So it's important to take a look at this. And this is one of their most recent projects. And, well, it's no wonder. Look, everything is bearish. A scam. It's a scam project. And it makes sense. Look at this. The TGE. Everyone buys their tokens. It is at 20 cents. And what is this? A couple days. The price absolutely plummets. It doesn't go up after that. In fact, it flatlines and then has another steep drop over here. And uh, the price hasn't continued dropping since. Uh, this is today, but this is this week. You can see that there is absolutely no liquidity. One quick transfer can absolutely spike up the price or down. And it is a very weird pattern, uh, just a very spamish project. Look at this. This is uh, throughout the month. There is zero, zero volume on this day, meaning that no one transferred any tokens. And it is just clear 
as day that this was a scam project, right? So that is Diablo. Let's try and find um, the project by clicking on this, or maybe if we have any uh, social media links on the website, that would have been even better. Here we also have the tokenomics, by the way. And I'm curious to see the TGE. Oh, look at this. Uh, look at this. Oh, what a scam, man. Oh, it's just hard to look at. They bought the token for, let's see, the public sale. This was a public sale, yes? Um, no, this was the private sale. Okay, so this was private, private sale. So these people bought their tokens for $0.08. Cents. So right now it is going for... Two cents so that is already a big loss but it gets worse because they got nothing at tge right zero tokens at tge and um that means let me see uh, about the vesting yeah look at this a lock for 24 months zero percent at tge 24 months vesting four percent each week so they're actually still vesting right now they're slowly getting their tokens but they've already you know, it's, it's already lost money, essentially. As I say here, a gross scam, 90% DU tokens, por la team, it's a different language. All right, so that is not a good look for Polygen. This is an outright scam project. And here we have another project, it's called Elf Matrix. Uh, looks good with the art, it's also a very recent project. I actually have here for you guys the website. Da, 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 da. Here's the website. Elf Matrix, uh, Ethereum, as we can see over here. Um, okay, so let's look into this real quick. Matrix is an ancient and mysterious alien planet that, that hides countless silent life elements. All right, it's one of those, huh? <laughs> okay, so there's this whole story about this elf, and then you have an arena adventure and a summon um, land. Okay, here we have the tokenomics. In-game currency staking, play to earn. Wait, that's not a tokenomic. <laughs> this is not a tokenomics, you guys. This is just... And then we have a Undox team, which looks like Snapchat. Uh, yeah, these are Snapchat characters, dude. And here we have a uh, Undox advisor partnered with Communitas. Yes, Communitas, in fact, did this project as well. Here is the research that Communitas did to it. Communitas is a pretty big launchpad, so I'm gonna just you know, uh, make the assumption that this wasn't as big as a scam, but it still doesn't look like a very promising project to me. Um, here they have staking, it's off-site, it brings you to a different site. Yeah, so I'm not gonna bring too much attention to it. You guys have a busy schedule. We're gonna move over to something else right now, but as you can see, the projects are very, very debatable at the best. And at the moment, there is no projects going on at all which of course has the Polygen token absolutely down. And apart from a bunch of bullish um, uh, comments, the overall sentiment is very bearish. Here we see someone saying, rock pull, be safe people and avoid this project. Terrible project with terrible mods in Telegram. No community skills whatsoever. All right, so this is so far looking pretty bad for Polygen. We're going to look at their white paper next and to their team. See if they might be able to turn this around in the future and you know just what the overall thought process of this team is and if there might be any chance of this project becoming relevant in the future or if it is truly a scam. Okay, so here we have it, the Polygen, Polygen, sorry, Launchpad, about Polygen. Polygen is the community launchpad, a decentralized launchpad where projects are free to innovate, experiment, and launch their ventures. At Polygen, we prioritize the interest of both projects and investors. Projects have complete flexibility to decide how much they want to raise, what auction mechanism they wish to use, and how they do their tiering and operating any project round. Projects are given the tools needed to experiment and create customizable initial decentralized offerings. All right, now let's look at what makes them different, apart from having absolutely no projects. <laughs> We're seeing that they appear to be transparent, or at least that's what they say. 
And they say most launch pads fail to deliver the appropriate information to produce an accurate investment decision. And if they do, then there is often no history of when the project reveals this information. Since all of the information on Polygen is stored on chain, users will have access to any changes made by the project. Made for projects to last. Well, again, I have to jump in and say this doesn't look like a project that lasted very long, with all due respect. Here they say anti whale. Using our FLO system in combination with raised tokens, we can negate malicious whales from purchasing up all the tokens and raise and dumping their tokens after the raise. The reason being is the more quantity of tokens one purchase, the higher the average price of the token will be. And then, ha the, then they have a question mark. I don't know why. Community is the deciding factor. Most launch pads do not require a project to launch with a community. They merely encourage their users to buy a new token project, um, often leading to investors not doing their due diligence. Well, I mean, uh, if you have investors on your site that don't do any due diligence just because they trust you, I don't think that's healthy either. I mean, you look, you're looking for investors that know how things work and you know that you have to do your own due diligence. Like you, for instance, you're watching this video, you know that if you're going to participate in a Polygon project, you're not just going to rely, oh, well, Rick said this. No, you're not. You're going to keep this as a basis and with this basis knowledge, you're going to do your own due diligence. So, I mean, again, not really agreeing with that. Here they have protecting investors oh, again. Sorry, I can't read this. I mean, look at this. This, it doesn't feel like uh, investors were protected. Now, again, to give Polygen some slack, uh, it is the investor's decision to invest in a project. But this was a blatant scam and it's just painful to see that they more well, listed this. I mean, uh, the same with, I don't want to say the same with Alpha Matrix, but I'm not bullish about that project at all either. So anyways, that's what they're saying that sets them apart. Here they have some information about how to connect your MetaMask wallet. I already went over that. Uh, how it's connected with Polygon, already did that either. They do have a tutorial on how to do your key KYC. Now, as always, KYC is required. If you don't know how it works, they do have it very well explained over here. They even have a video about it. So that shouldn't be a problem for those of you who do uh, have made their decision that they want to invest. Do your KYC. It's very important. It's very simple. Okay. I want to see other things such as this Polygen Super Staking, right? What is this? Polygen Super Staking, key futures of PGEN community super staking, right? A 30 day lockup period for staking PGEN on Polygen, Polygon, sorry, via super staking. PGEN rewards can self multiply as the network demand and market value fluctuates, which is represented as potential rewards. When a user exits the super staking pool, 10% of his or hers, while wow, they're inclusive, <laughs> rewards are distributed among those users who remain staking in it. PGEN holders are better incentivized for the time they stay committed to support Polygen. Every 24 hours, the PGEN super staking platform displays the top five users that have staked the biggest amount of PGEN. And last of all, an all-in-one tab with the uh, platform to check PGEN price, supply metrics, and social media updates will be live soon. Definitely a lot of coming soon that I'm reading. I'm assuming it's because it's a new project and a lot of parts of the ecosystem are still under development. It's fine, I understand. But um, yeah, I hope to see those functions soon, of course. And here they have a step-by-step -step guide to super staking, which basically starts off by users going to the Polygen super staking. Uh, they say here, but it's not clickable. Uh, then connect your wallet, blah, blah, blah. You can look into it if you want. Uh, here they have the raise token, not very interesting. I'll go over it through here. Uh, one of the most common questions we get from new members in our community is what is the raise token? Well, the raise token is a pseudo token that we engineered to be able to offer fair investment and raise opportunities within the Polygen D app. In short, a raise token is a distributed IOU that an investor purchases during a raise of a project. After the raise, if the project collects enough funding, it meets the raising target 
or uh, surpasses it, then the investors will be able to trade their race tokens for the tokens of the project. In, in turn, all race tokens that have been exchanged for the project tokens are then burned. Okay, good to know and very, very clear as well. So we don't see, we see here the Polygon Tears um, and the Ambassador. I could not find any tokenomics on their white paper. I was able to find it somewhere else. So I'm going to try and uh, grab that. There we go. So here we see the Polygon tokenomics. Man, it just, sorry, my bad guys. Um, here we see the Polygon tokenomics. It's very important. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't on the website or the white paper. It's here on their medium though. So at least they, they have it open. It's very important. And from here we can navigate over to, let's say this is the seed race. Here is the sale summary. So we see amount to be raised 2.6 million, um, tokens to be sold uh, 423 million. Right, okay, okay. Public sale 500K, yep, yep. I am interested in the, um, let's see. Ah, there we go. Uh, the token allocation. I cannot make it any bigger, so I'll try and zoom in through here. There we go. So the treasury is 23%, which is a huge amount. The ecosystem is 9%. The team is 10, marketing 9.5, and advisors is 5. Is that already 100? Wait, 20, 30? No, nah, that's not 100. Ah, look at this. Non sale tokens gets 57%. Non sale tokens. Interesting and also a little bit vague. It's a very interesting tokenomics. We're seeing 57% the non sale tokens and 9% uh, marketing. I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but it's just weird. It's just a bit odd. Here we have the next 12 month distribution, which is basically just their vesting schedule. Uh, for M1, M6. As you can see over here, we see that the seed rounds will have a 8% percentage on TGE. Um, then they will have a cliff and in M1, they will start linear vesting 8% every month until M6. And what is interesting, or at least what I find interesting, is that the team gets 10% at TGE. I don't like that. Um, as uh, Why I don't like that? Let me actually uh, show it to you guys. Oh, uh, let's go over here. Okay, look. So this is TGE, right? So the uh, team got 10% of their tokens released right over here. Now, what happened after the TGE? It plummeted, but it didn't matter because the team was already able to sell 10% of their tokens, right? So they already made good profits. Um, now, why do I don't like that? Well, if you are truly loyal to your project, well, then you don't give yourself tokens at TGE, right? You're confident that later down the line, your tokens will still be worth because you have a good launchpad. So most respectable launchpads have a cliff and then linear vesting and the 0% TGE for the team and the advisors, but Polygen hasn't done that. And also the advisors will get 5% TGE. Um, public round, also interesting, will only get 2%. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a bit of a weird schedule in my opinion. And, um, uh, it's also very messy, but I, would, I, it, I had to do this all through a medium and it was just, uh, it was just a mess. It was just a mess. Okay. So that was all for the tokenomics. Uh, let's see. I think the white paper is just about finished as well. So that's all for that. All right, you guys, in the second part of this video, we're going to go over the homepage to creep into the thought process of the project to see uh, what they are really offering. Uh, we're gonna look at the team, people behind this, and we're gonna look at the community sentiment in their social media. So you want to stay tuned for the last part of this video as well. Here we see uh, their problem statement with the launchpads of today. Again, they go on about the transparency and that it's open for abuse. The gatekeeper approach and the entire process is inefficient. Again, uh, I feel like they haven't done a really solid job in coming up with a solution to do it different. We're seeing the same old tier system. Uh, we're seeing just a normal DAO, which is not anything oddly uh, unique in my opinion. Uh, you see it all the time. So I don't feel like they, you know, they state a problem, but I don't feel like they have a very clear plan on what to do different than uh, how other launchpads do it. They say here, all existing launchpads are fundamentally the same, but I don't feel like this launchpad is much different. Uh, it doesn't appear to be cross-chain. So 
it's actually less different. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the couple of differences that they do have are not really that important. And being a community launchpad, well, I mean, join the club, right? Look at Communitas, that's a, that's a community launchpad, and they have much more voting rights. Not to trash on them too much. <laughs> the problem for projects, uh, forced to accommodate the launchpad's demands. Yeah, well, that is something I would agree with, right? That you see that happening a lot. So for the projects, uh, Polygen might be very nice, but as we can see, if you just leave it up to the project alone, well, then the project can do whatever the hell they want, which can lead to instances such as Diablo. So I feel like it is kind of part of the Launchpad's responsibility to help and guide the project and give advice and also set boundaries. What can you do as a project and what not? Giving them completely free play is basically an F you to your user base, in my personal humble opinion, of course. Here they say somehow the crypto space ended up with a permissionless gatekeeper approach uh, to project launches. It doesn't work. We So we built a decentralized launchpad. Uh, we will do uh, for launchpad and projects what Uniswap did for tokens. Okay. Um, free for any project list to list. Uh, okay. Event raise based tokens, uh, not permanent tokens. Fair assets, fair price, pro project, per investor. Well, it is a very cheap launchpad. I have to say that. Anti-will is good, anti-bot, anti-scalper, resilient, anti-rog, uh, okay, flash loans, and the best projects are featured to the community. Okay, I haven't seen a featured status on any of the projects yet, but uh, okay. Here we see introducing Polygen, 100% decentralized, fair assets, efficient, yeah, yeah, they just repeat themselves a little bit here. Okay, so here they say raise liquidity, this is the second step. Investors, incubators, or community are able to provide liquidity for the raise pool of a new project. Project sets rewards in the in the trust, and well, it goes on and on. Okay, well, that is all for the uh, team uh, for the I'm sorry for the website page. Uh, let's look at the team. We're seeing Avid Atkinson, uh, Josh Hardy, Jennifer Klassen, and David Meister. Um, here is strategy UI design partnerships and development. Uh, they seem to be fully docs as they have LinkedIn's. Let's go ahead and fish, uh, visit some of these LinkedIn's. Looks like a pretty small team as well, only four people thus far. And I don't know who the CEO is. It doesn't seem to say, I'm sure we'll find out. Here we do see their advisories and their partners. They have a lot of advisors. And uh, they say our advisories and partner network act as a support network to power the growth and adoption of Polygen. Okay, so again, also five advisors. Um, good to see. Okay, then here are the here are the boys. Right, here's the team. Uh, David Meister, he's the owner of Dim Valley. So he doesn't. This is of course you know something different. So let's see who was who was he. Um, ah, he's a developer. All right, fair enough. So he does seem to have a lot of experience in development, which is good. Developer's not that interesting though, as long as it gets done. Here we see Jennifer Klassen. Uh, she's the co-founder of Gravity Ventures, so not uh, Polygen either. She doesn't even have it listed in her LinkedIn, so that's interesting. Here we see Josh Hardy, a Web3 builder in London. And also here we are not seeing Polygen listed in the LinkedIn page. Okay, maybe David Atkinson has something about Polygen. No, why? Pollinate, head of strategy, but nothing about Polygen. So very interesting. Why wouldn't they say it on their LinkedIn that they work at Polygen? Do they not want people to know? Uh, very peculiar. Uh, maybe their advisors have anything stated about being affiliated with the project. It doesn't look like it. Not nothing about Polygen. Okay, very interesting and good to note. I can give you guys a solid explanation as to why they do that. It, it, it can only be something bad. Uh, if you're proud of your project and you're fully doxxed, you would want to put it on there. That's all I'm, uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, then here we have the roadmap. They say, we don't believe in entering a market without a solid product. Polygen is built and ready to go. We are launching our ecosystem token first and will then feature our first projects. All right. So they started in quarter four of 2021, quite a while ago now, uh, by now. 
uh, launch of PGen sale on Polygen plus five project launches, which is interesting because there were only nine projects or so launched. Um, so that means that more than half of which uh, happened in the first quarter. Then here we see the fully permissionless product in DAC launches day one, and then V2 of smart contract in the library. Quarter one of 2022 saw uh, plus 30 curated launches. Again, I, I wonder where, um, because again, let me find the, the page. I wonder where, because here we see all of their completed, or again, we should be able to see all of their completed projects, but we were only able to see, I believe six or so projects. Here we see three, here we see another three. Oh, there's a second page. Okay, no, but it still doesn't explain it. I mean, no, this is still not all of it. Yeah, it, I don't know, man. Uh, where where are the 30 other listings? Why, why did you remove them? Uh, I cannot wrap my head around that. Quarter two, 30 plus curated launches again. Ah, man, I, look at this, 400 permissionless launches. Well, I, I haven't seen them. You don't have any launches right now live. You have nothing coming up. I only see a bunch of launches in, in your history. I mean, it's fine if you delete some of the older launches from your uh, history, but come on. Uh, you, you haven't done 500 permissionless launches, let alone 30 curated launches. And here they say beyond, which is all, again, quite vague. They say real world asset sales and integration with centralized finance. Okay, yeah, you know, that's fine. I am missing quarter four of 2022. I mean, beyond is fine, but quarter four is in a little bit. Could have maybe put uh, on the launch pad already. Anyway, uh, that is the roadmap. Again, not very bullish on that. Uh, on the side, for the rest, we don't have anything else. So right now it is time for us to take another quick look at the token and then the social media and the sentiment and uh, then the holders of the token. And that will be it. So we're almost there. Stay tuned because you want to have the last, you, you made it so far. So you want to have the last bits of information as well. Okay, so who is holding the token? How many people are holding it? How much is it being transferred? Uh, here we see 148,000 transfers. We only see 2.8 thousand addresses that are currently holding the token. That is very little. And um, well, again, that does indicate not just that it is a smaller launch pad, but also again, that there are many people that don't seem to trust this launch pad. Um, this is a very low amount of addresses. Um, if we move over to the holders, we can see that 66% is held by one wallet. It does not appear to be a contracted wallet. So we can assume that this is either the team or developer wallet or a, uh, a very big whale, but it would be a very big whale. I mean, damn, this wallet has, but the value is zero. Okay, interesting. I, I can't put my finger on exactly what that is. For the rest though, we only have much smaller amounts uh, between 40,000 and 14,000, uh, very, very small amounts. Uh, as you can see over here, look at this. This is only, these are hundreds of addresses holding only a couple hundred of this token, which is less than a dollar. So um, yeah, that's a very interesting pattern as well. Looking at the transfers, we can see uh, some more interesting little facts. The token is being transferred around a lot, very small quantities. Also not something you see often with a launch pad as the utility of the token comes from not moving it around and just staking it. So yeah, interesting Polygen scan. Here we see the Polygen uh, Twitter. They have 70,000 followers and they are uh, in Dubai which is by the way, a crypto paradise. So that's not too bad. Uh, 70,000 followers. Okay. Well, again, I have to say a bit iffy to see 70 K. I mean, we're seeing here two likes on a tweet. So where are the 70,000 people bots? I hear you think I'm with you. I think that might be, uh, we see, uh, some memes and stuff like that. Overall, they have mostly just updates. They did announce a partnership with Cardens over here, which got a bit of traction over on Twitter. We saw some people saying here, I anticipated that this corporation will be successful. Looking forward to this. Uh, the accounts are small, but they don't look like bots. So there's definitely some people that are stoked about this launch pad. And they announce here another uh, IGO. They say that it, uh, it, it closed on the 27th. Again, I could not find it on the app, but it was a galaxy arena. 
Uh, here we have another uh, tweet that got quite some traction. They say, before we start the incoming month, let's look back at the exciting things we are up to this week. And I believe this is a thread talking about a lot of stuff here. Ah, look at that. We see the PGN token distribution in a graph and I could not find that one before. It's not loading for me, unfortunately. But um, yeah, well, I mean, we already looked at it, but at least here now it is in a graph as well, which is very nice. Anyways, that is the Twitter. They also have a YouTube, but it's not important at all. It's a very small one. Like I said before, they do also have a Medium. They post eh, so, so relatively frequently. There's some good value there with some good tutorials, but that's about it. Um, and again, 70K followers, eh, uh, eh, I don't know. Might be uh, at least a little bit bought it. Anyways, that's it for that. Uh, let's move over to the homepage and uh, talk about you know my final thoughts and the conclusion so overall we are seeing some sketchy sketchy things you know uh, the team hasn't st talked about polygen whatsoever on their linkedin nor have their advisors uh, the roadmap is not fully complete the tears they're incredibly cheap just like the token my biggest problem is however with the projects we're seeing some very debatable projects and currently nothing is alive. They're saying that many, many projects have been launched, but I am having a hard time finding them. Again, please let me know if I'm wrong, if I'm looking the wrong places, but I did my best, I couldn't find it. And yeah, overall, I'm not bullish at all on Polygen. The overall community sentiment seems to be a bit negative as well. So that is my personal opinion. I think if they don't have any good projects going to go on, then my price prediction for Polygen is, of course, that the price will keep going down. Again, no utility is a lower price. And as they have no projects coming up, I can only see the price going down and not up. Then again, I'm no financial advisor. So always do your own due diligence and don't fully rely on my advice. All right, you guys, that was it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And let me know what you guys thought about the project. And I will see you all in the next one. All right. Ciao, ciao. Boys.